Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One to One podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kalunke, and I'm the founder of Zing Business Systems and Zing AI. This is a podcast about the journeys of our BNI chapter members, Utah Summit chapter. And today I'm excited to introduce our guest, Fred Heath from Utah Avenue Insurance. Welcome, Fred. Thank you, Matt. Good to be here. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, we've talked about doing it for a few weeks, a few times. And uh, now is the time, so uh, let's get the ice broken. I know you started in a, a long career in the banking industry. I remember you saying something about banking and I fell asleep. Would you mind refreshing us as to where yeah. you started and what got yeah. you insurance service? Yeah, I was a long time financial service employee, 20 years with Wells Fargo Bank, getting back to a teller in college. I had a degree in communications, took a sales job with Wells Fargo. That led to roles on the retail side of things for about 16 years. The last four branch years, manager or branch, yeah, everything inside of a branch, yeah, different sizes, branches, grocery store branches. So, were you there prior to Brookshire Hathaway? Okay, so the Berkshire Halfway mergers, and that didn't really help you talk much. But, um, yeah, I was the prior. I was with Wells Fargo when there was only, actually, my first paychecks were with First Interest. We had Wells Fargo had a hostel takeover with them. And it was only on the acquiring side after that. And until I lost Fargo in 2016. Were you always and here in Utah, or did you yeah, bounce? Yeah, yeah. Before, but what happened, Wells Fargo really had a small presence in Utah in the 90s. And then in early 2000, 2001, to be specific, when First Security Bank and Zion's merger fell apart, Wells Fargo and First Security. And that's when Wells Fargo's presence became large. And prior to, was 2001 and 2000, a company called Norwest bought Wells Fargo a big mortgage presence that kept the Wells Fargo man from a branding perspective. That's just this, how it was, I wasn't a player Wait. in any of that. Now I'm yeah, changing yeah. hats and yeah. hats around. But I, I grew with Wells Fargo and then in 2012 I joined the what they called their business banking group and was a relationship manager basically had a book of clients that I tried to grow bank products business owners. And you were a bookie. There and commercial lending, and various suites of products. But then just things, the way things materialized in that role, I joined Enter in the fall of 2016, and they were small outfit in Utah. They're still, they're still around, quartered out of Wall, Washington. They, I think they were looking to acquire, but they ended up selling their youth offices, right, to American Port, which is now all today. My final stint in the financial services world was with, that was the first time I was alone on the acquired side. And I wasn't really happy with how I landed. My pay was good. I was just frankly bored. And so I joined what was called at the time, the Utah CDC, which does not stand for Centers for Disease Control. That's a certified different company that specializes in the SBA 504 loan program. I was with them. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. And at the height of it, I'm a, I'm a tennis player. And I had a couple of friends in the health insurance business as I picked their brains a little bit in the summer of 2020. And consulting with my wife, I made the dive from becoming a W2 guy to a 1099 guy. And very fortunate to find one of my uh, tennis playing friends, Spencer Ellis, who was an agent at Utah Avenue. That's how I got introduced to five and I'm a passion for seven or eight agents that are part of this. You guys don't have summer barbecues. Oh um, yeah, we get together. It's, it's seven, a, it's eight, can't remember. We the agents and then there's a front end staff and all. Yeah. And sometimes you forget who's who. No, not really. Yeah, it's a good, it's a fun team. It feels good. 